this is BN Reddy. Uh, I got around 12 plus IT industry experience out of 12 plus. I got around eight years on business intelligence and data science. I'm a certified data scientist and I do write um, statistical algorithms uh, in our language and Python. And I do teach both uh, data science techniques using R and Python, as well as I do teach Tableau, ClickView, and IBM Watch Analytics. These all are my tools that I've been, uh, been doing a lot of research and I've been working on it since long back. This is brief about myself. I, I am working now uh, as a freelancer. I am working on multiple projects. So I have gained a lot of experience in a span time right now. So that's all about myself. Uh, let us start now. I just want to give you a brief uh, introduction of data science as well as in this, in this video, I just want to share with you um, why should we learn data science is the first thing and then what are the various topics that we are going to be discussing in data science i got prepared a complete uh, uh, what we call uh, data science course uh, so spending a lot of time i have uh, prepared this data science course which covered every topic and every every uh, statistical uh, techniques and mathematical techniques and everything we're going to be discussing here so we're going to be uh, discussing theoretically and we'll see implementing that using our language and as well as a python and we're going to be discussing about the spark anyways we will come back to this course so once we uh, once we know about why should we learn data science so let's start that guys here is i got just prepared uh, to give you a brief understanding about the data science guys data science is a kind of rare breed no one can we can't find them um and 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 kind of regular academic uh courses are the coming out we know right uh, we have thousands of uh, millions of people you know every year coming out as engineers we can find them uh, we can find them in these millions they're very right breed uh, they themselves you know got trained um, over the eventually over the period they gain the experience in various uh, segments like computer science and mathematics and statistics and domain knowledge then they can become data scientist got it it's a rare bit that's why we call it rare bit so now so first let us know so we will see how to become a data scientist i will i will give you a easiest way of becoming a data scientist uh, we will discuss about the steps and all the before that first thing is that data science is a set of techniques and tools for the transformation of raw data into the meaningful useful information for business purpose that's exact requirement of data science guys most of the companies right now whether you talk about the us or few european countries western countries uh, are depending on the artificial intelligence for decision making artificial intelligence more relevant to the data science we we analyze huge amount of historical data and then we produce insights to the customer. Got it. So while we are processing or analyzing the historical data, we apply some sort of statistical algorithms on the data. We do data mining and then so we apply those algorithms to process the data and all. Then we get the insights. Got it. So the first thing is we just understand about data science meaning here and if you want to become a data scientist the data science is always the combination of computer science for example in this course we're going to be learning how to implement statistical algorithms using our language and python and spark so that's more computer science and then mathematics statistics we're going to be discussing your several mathematical statistical from the basics to the advanced level statistics 
and we implement these maths and statistics problems uh, in computer science and if you can convert these math statistics into the computer oriented programming but if you don't know the domain knowledge domain knowledge in sense say example you need to bring out some insights out of the uh, historical data of the banking or incidents or telecom or pharmaceutical whichever it may be this is called domain knowledge if you don't if you don't have a domain knowledge you can't you can't analyze the data so in this course i can say that i can i can make you a proper a perfect you know uh, uh, suitable data scientist by giving uh, equally all these three uh, you know uh, technologies and knowledge is mathematical statistics computer science and domain knowledge so i can see that the end of this course you will become a perfect data scientist so let's go ahead that anyways we will see now i just want to uh, show you something like you know why should why data science why should i learn data science why don't i go for sap or why don't we go for Oracle Labs or other technologies? Why should I learn data science? That's a big question, right? Look into the IT trend here, guys. Here we have, I'm just taking you back to the 30 years. So let's start from the 30 years back. See, in 1980s and 90s, we have CUI applications, character user interface. So you must remember that we used to type the commands then we get the answers from the systems we call them character user interfaces mainframes so those days computers are like accessible for these guys like you know scholars and scientists they they are the you know users of the computer science computer missions and all so they understood and then they made if they want to spread the industry they understood that they made applications uh, where anyone uh, everyone can understand the applications uh, because they developed graphical user interfaces so in 1991 to 2000 they spent a lot of time and they developed a lot of graphical user interfaces so then the computer spread it across even the corners of each and every country um, you know, even villages so people even lemons can understand and they can easily you know start working with computers because it has a lot of graphical user interfaces so that's where we even the york labs and sap everything came in between 1991 and 2000 big erp applications which generated a lot of you know uh, jobs in the it industry coming from there to here so here the way the amount of data which we stored in the database is very less since here we won't upload any images multimedia and all just we give the commands and according to command it shows the data and all there is no graphical user interfaces etc etc so the, the amount of data which we store here is very less and retrieve is very less and here since we started using graphical user interfaces the amount of data is you know gradually increased and from here this is where guys this is a turning point of it industry from 2001 to 2010 all our focus shifted on the web applications we started building cloud applications and google become more popular youtube facebook everything amazon uh, alibaba and if we talk about india flipkart so many e-commerce applications so many social networking applications and the people started receiving a huge amount of data they're feeding you do you know that we have around 3 billion people are every day interacting with the computer they're generating lots of data and only google receives are per day 32 petabytes of information that's the amount of information every day they're receiving because of web applications and in these 10 years this web application become more popular and everyone started building e-commerce applications and web-oriented applications and they made sap cloud oracle cloud every erp crm applications become a cloud so 
there is a lot of requirement of Java resources, PHP resources, and Python resources. So it is done now. It's it's saturated now. So everything is built now. So we need we not to have a requirement. We need not to hide the any Java resources and all because it's done now. People started using uh, SAP and all. And earlier it was say when I want to install SAP, implement SAP, so I need to have a minimum five to ten resources. Now it's become a cloud, so they need not to pay any money for resources. They just need to pay for subscription. They can start using it. Got it. So that's that is the impact. That's why we don't have much jobs in now ERP applications and CRM applications. Coming to the 2011 to 14, this is this time is very very less the span is very narrow span but in these three years smartphone applications become more popular everybody started learning android ios and the general building smartphones and all. do you know so we have a 60 million smartphone apps in android and ios so what else we can build this market also saturated got it so all these 30 years we just been building applications or mainframes or geo applications web applications smartphone to just capture the data trust me we don't know now really we have haven't realized that we, we just capture the data we don't know how to use the captured data or historical data to make the data products uh, to utilize the historical data to make the precise decisions or to forecast the things or predict the things so now in 2015 people started thinking about utilizing the data which we got from various sort of applications from all the corners of the you know the world and the data which we are receiving is very huge we have a huge requirement of BA professionals and data scientists who can analyze the data and who can pull the kind of artificial intelligence to make the decisions automatically based on historical data. So to build that, we need to know people who knows these algorithms and statistical algorithms as well as the programming language skills. So we don't have a skilled data scientist right now and we have huge shortage that's the reason we all all we all ignored the potential of the data scientist and the requirement of the data scientist role all these years now we can see that here in the 2015 that is the one of the strongest reason that we need to learn data science and now let's see the same thing that we discussed about the big data so from 2005 this is this orange is orange indicates the structured data and the blue one indicates the unstructured data from the 2000 as i told you guys here we can see that from 2000 to 2015 since the web application came into the existence so 2005 these unstructured data are now growing anomalously the huge amount of data for till 2015 we can see this got it so we need a people now the world information is doubling every two years now this 2015 data is going to be doubling every two years by 2020 the world will generate 50 times the amount of information and 75 times the number of information containers that huge amount of data is there trust me we don't have a proper sufficient tools to analyze as well as the data scientists who can bring insights out of this data that's the biggest problem of the you know the it industry right now so guys trust me this market is going to be fully matured by 2018 by the time it really required huge amount of data scientists see here we need 190,000, 190,000 190, projected shortage in data centers by 2018. This generated by the McKinsey Global Institute. 
this is the huge shortage and coming to the demand for deep analysis talent in the US I, I just I just took the US and across the globe trust me the requirement is around 4.4 million data scientists are required across the globe by 2020 50 to 60 million year then is projected supply by 2018 this is 2008 supply and demand the light gray demand the thick gray supply see this way we can clearly understand that the, the, the huge demand that we have for data science and guys one more thing we have to discuss here anyone who who wants to learn the technology their first concern is as soon as they learn it do they get the job do i get the job then the second thing is what is my pay see here i'm just giving you brief so here if you talk about analytics professionals up to three years experience they get sixty five thousand dollars and data scientists they get eighty thousand dollars per annum four to eight experience eighty five one hundred twenty thousand dollars there's a huge on nine plus years one fifty thousand dollars this is data i just got at this from the the wall street general got it so this is paycheck of the data scientist now you can understand the value of the data scientist in years and across the globe so now the point is how to learn the data science all this is very good we just understand about the data science and why data science and everything we just came across now how to learn data science is the thing right i can suggest you three stages for the data science the first stage is learn and understand simple maths and statistic formulas and equations to the first stage in our course the simple and mathematics and uh, mathematics formulas and equations are being theoretically discussed we will discuss theoretically as well as all these formulas i will show in front of you i will type them and i will show them executed very well and we see the results there the second thing is once you learn the uh, the formula and equations of maths and statistics you have to implement them in any domain right so pick a domain where you strong learn understand data of this domain for example let's say example banking or retail for example retail we have a basket analysis we can do customer sentiment analysis we can do customer loyalty anal analytics so we can do all this stuff by applying these maths and statistics that you learned here and to apply that you need to have a one tool in a place that helps you easily to implement all this stuff pick a bait tool which you feel easy to learn we have several you know power bi abm watson analytics tableau clickwave so here i can do one thing guys apart from the teaching r and python i'm going to be teaching you one of these tools for example tableau i can i can teach tableau additionally you know for you to easily make this done but this is not enough this is just you are at basic level if you follow this as yes, learning simple math and pick up domain and learning a bi tool then it's at basic level any bi tool any bi tool it is a framework it, which has its own limitations you can't go beyond those limitations as boundaries you can't go and develop you know beyond those boundaries you have to work within that limitations got it so it's a basic level so how can i become an expert that's where i can see python is widely used general purpose high level programming language it has several frameworks scientific frameworks packages too many things are there with respect to the data science even nasa has developed too many codes where you can download those codes and you can customize them according to your requirement and you can make the wonderful products analytics products using these codes code.nasa nasa.gov got it so first uh, python has uh, a few frameworks for data science anaconda book up plotly okay we got too many you know frameworks also in the, in python so here in this course we're going to be discussing python all these numpy sci-fi pandas matplotlib libraries sky kit, sky kit learn and everything 
I'm going to be teaching you each and every library and we see how to implement them and we we install Conconda continuum you know, uh, utilities tools and we work on the those stuff for example here this is uh, Jupyter is a is a editor of you know Python data science we can write the code in front of you and we can implement the things like this got it we will see everything you know uh, we implement and we 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 see how to get the things done in front of you so in R also so we can see that getting data on the code and we see the result and everything so guys in this course just we we won't just learn these few statistical uh, formulas and all we we just we go through an each and every formula and we take the each and every algorithm and we implement it in R and Python both and even spark we'll discuss about it so that's how I am just planning it you know so once we done with the Python Python is it's very user-friendly language and why I want to teach your Python is uh, you can even integrate all this stuff in web applications because Python is more you know uh, compatible with uh, developing web applications and all coming to the R is you know it's it provides a wide variety of statistical you know uh, libraries and this this is the only language for statistics after SAS R is the most popular one in the world for statistics. So if you learn the R, that's enough, and we can we can do wonders in statistics. So in the entire course, I'm just planning to keep more focus on statistics, math, as well as the R and Python language, so that you will become uh, handsome by the end of this session. We'll be having answer on the writing code in Python and R. Uh, and you will understand any of the statistical you know uh, algorithms or the uh, the problems and if we then if we come to discussing about uh, data science course here so guys uh, we need not to have any prerequisites uh, no prior knowledge of statistics and everything because here I'm going to be discussing from very very basics to advanced we start with descriptive and inferential statistics from here you can find all this stuff you know so we start with samples and populations we will discuss a couple of uh, real-time scenarios and i will share with you the problems so you can practice them a couple of exercises i can share with you you can practice and you can gain knowledge and this is around three months course guys so we have to discuss we it's continuously three months so that you will you will never lose the grip on the subject so we spend for example we spend one month on statistics and another one month on uh, uh, R language and another 20 days on the Python language and another 10 days we're going to be spending on the spark spark is something which is uh, it's a mission learning library it has mission learning library uh, we, we discuss we we write the code uh, in the Spark using Python and all. So we see that the writing algorithms even in the Spark. Spark is alternate of MapReduce in the hardware. So we discussed a lot about the Spark as well. So 